So you've just stuck your spoon into something that looks like soup, and you're not sure what do you call it? Guk, pang, jjigae, or jeonggol. First of all, for today's question, thank you to Walter Foreman and Talkative Blair on Twitter for providing it. And I lost a lot of sleep trying to come up with the actual difference between these four. So let's get started. There are two more words that we should learn first before we go into this, and the first one is kungmul, which is broth or what you get when you simply boil down vegetables and meat together. This is not a soup by itself, but sometimes you might just drink kungmul. For example, if you go to a omuk or odeng vendor, someone selling fish cake, they might give you a cup of this to drink while you're eating your fish cake. Another term that you should know is kondoki. Now, kondoki is the small pieces of things. It can be anything that's within soup. It could be vegetables or meat or whatever gives kungmul more of a texture. So anything that's in the soup, any ingredients are referred to as kondogi. Kuk, first of all, doesn't really have very many kondogi. The point of kuk is more of the kungmul and less of the kondogi. And in some cases, kuk can actually take the place of water in a meal. Uh, for example, you might have miyok kuk or oineng kuk. So the main point of a kuk is that the focus is on the kungmul and not on the kondogi. Next, we have tang, which is originally simply a Chinese word for kuk. So originally, tang has the exact same meaning as kuk, except tang is a honorific word. It's more of a fancy word for kuk. Another similar word would be keng, which has the exact same meaning as tang, so you might see that as well. However, Nowadays, tang and kuk are used to refer to different types of things. Tang typically has more kondogi than kuk. In addition, tang will also have more seasonings in it than kuk. Also, while kuk will be pre-seasoned, so you don't add anything to it while you eat, tang, you can adjust how salty or seasoned you want the soup to be. One example of that is seollong tang. So when you eat seollong tang, you can adjust how much salt you want to add into it for flavor. Now, being an American, I do like two, three giant tablespoons <laughs> and Koreans like go into shock around me. And another thing, tang will typically have much less kungmul, much less broth in it than a kuk will. An example of that could be, say you have two dishes made with omuk, which is fish cake. You can have a omuk kuk and you can have a omuk tang. Now an omuk kuk would have much more kungmul inside of it, and an omuk tang would be much less and perhaps with much more fish cake in it. And finally, tang will typically have a focus on a meat or a seafood. So you can have hemul tang, which has seafood in it, or kamja tang, not potato kamja, but pork backbone. You can have that, which is a focus on pork bones. And then there's jjigae, which if you compare it with kuk, it has much more ingredients, it's much thicker and saltier. So you can think of jjigae as a more salty and thicker version of regular kuk. For example, you might have kimchi jjigae, which is focused on the kimchi inside of it, but contains a lot of ingredients and the soup broth inside of it is much thicker, it's been reduced more. Or you can have tenjang jjigae, which also has more of a thick broth. And last we have jeonggol which could probably best translate just as hot pot. If you're familiar with hot pot, it's meant to be more of a full meal than any of the others. If you have jjigae, it's going to be a side. A tang would be kind of the main, but you know, you'd have a lot of side dishes to go along with it. And kuk would just be something that you can have instead of a drink with your meal. Jeonggol will be the full meal because it has many more ingredients and larger amounts of ingredients to make it a full meal. In addition, the type of kondogi that go into jeonggol can either be meat, seafood, or vegetable, just like anything else, but they're meant to be in larger sizes, so you can even take them out separately from the dish and eat them on their own. And many times when you order a jeonggol, the items will come out in the pot and you're meant to cook them right there at your table, kind of making for a more a fancy experience compared to the others. For example, you could have pasot, Jeonggol, made with large mushrooms, or you can have mandu jeonggol, which will be filled with lots of mandu. 
and those would also, you could take them out with your spoon and eat them separately. So, it's not necessarily simple to understand, but I hope this makes it a little bit easier. Anyway, so if you have your own questions, feel free to send them in, and I will see you guys in another episode of Korean FAQ. 그럼 다음에 또 봐!